Good morning and Happy New Year. If you're new to this series of videos, I'm writing a sharding statsd proxy in Rust as a way to learn that language. And today we're going to handle some edge cases to avoid crashes. I th but first things first, I think I remarked in two previous videos about the collect function, this one right here. Uh, this line is using a regular expression to split a line of text, and then it calls collect on the results. So let's walk through what that's doing and talk through what collect does. Because I should know. I made an assumption in um, a couple of videos ago and figured I should, I should actually uh, look for evidence. So split in the regular expression regex crate returns an iterator of substrings delimited, delimited by a match of the regular expression. So it returns an iterator. Uh, the Rust docs are really awesome and uh, you can see here that it actually returns a split struct. So let's go there. And the split struct implements the iterator trait. And if we go to that trait, we can look over here and find the collect method. And collect transforms an iterator into a collection, which is, which makes sense. Uh, it gives us a vec. So any custom struct or type that implements the iterator, iterator trait should have the collect method. Um, and the reason why we want to collect this iterator that's returned by split is because we want to remove some elements and then sort the vector and do some other manipulation. Okay. I think that's good enough for now. So one of the other things that I mentioned that we should look at is the technicality of networking and UDP packets in particular. I mean, it applies to TCP as well, but we're dealing with UDP right here. Um, when I listen for statsd messages, we need to create a buffer to read into whenever we, you know, get a UDP packet. So here we're binding to a socket, um, a UDP socket. And here we receive from it into this buffer. And I made a comment about the size of the buffer. Um, no networking expert, but I know, I know there's something called an MTU, which is the maximum transmission unit. And that's that can be customized at the operating system level in routers and switches. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, but I've definitely seen it um, customized in Linux. So if we do this, we see, I'm pretty sure broadcast signals UDP. Well, it doesn't signal UDP, but so the MTU on this interface, which is my network Ethernet interface, is 1500 bytes. So I'm going to set my buffer to, to 2K right now just to make sure that we can handle UDP messages without dropping data. I have not found a way to programmatically get like the equivalent of this from within Rust. There may not be a way. Um, I would expect it to be kind of part of the networking stack, the networking crate, the standard net crate, but I didn't see it. And honestly, it should probably be a property that's returned after you bind a socket to, in this case, this should map to this interface. And it'd be great if it was a property on the socket so you could kind of query what that interface's capabilities are. But I haven't seen that. Maybe that doesn't make sense, but that's my assumption of what would be super helpful. So for now, I'm just going to hard code it to 2,000 bytes and move on. So one of the other things um, 
that I wanted to fix was UTF-8 checks. And actually, I'm not going to do that now because that's going to involve a bit more investigation. And I wanted to keep this video a little short, but we'll see. Um, so one thing I know I can do is properly handle empty lines. Um, so data is going to be a string type. And here we use the lines method to split. And let's go ahead and look at that. Let's pull up the primitive type string. And here we see the lines function returns an iterator over the lines of a string as string slices. Lines are ended with either a new line or a carriage return new line. OK. It's good to know. So it's going to return a string. And then what we need to do is handle the length. Oh, actually, so if I if length equals, actually, is this the right way to do equality checks in Rust? I have not done one of those yet, so let's check. Yeah, looks good. Um, now there's a, the docs actually talk about len. The length is in bytes, not chars or graphemes. So let's quickly talk about that. Um, I'm pretty sure bytes is what we want, but the reason why there's a distinction is that if the bytes uh, holds a UTF-8 string, then the number of characters, UTF-8 characters within that bytes, you know, list of bytes might be less than the overall bytes itself because UTF-8 uh, supports uh, characters made up of four bytes. Uh, so if we were to um, want to get the number of characters, we could use something like this. That would return an iterator over the chars of the string. So it actually returns a chars struct, and the chars struct, I believe there is a, uh, let's see, I saw it mentioned somewhere. There's a count function. I'm not sure where it's actually implemented at. Oh, maybe it's this. Maybe it's count here. Maybe it ends up being um, part of the iterator trait that gets implemented by the by the chars struct. Okay. So we would do something like this, and that would um, cause Rust to interpret the line. string as chars, and then count the number. But we don't want to do that, because really, the presence of any byte at all uh, indicates that we have something to parse. We've got some message that's come in, and hopefully it's valid, but we're not going to check for that right now. We'll, we'll assume the best, just to keep this project rolling. All right, so if line len is zero. Let's uh, let's print something out. And we do that with println bang. Pretty sure it's just doubles. Yep. Skipping empty line. All right. Let's see if that still builds. Nope. All right. Continue is not. Oh, maybe it was because of that. Okay. Let's do that. And I actually changed the statsd Python helper script. If you don't, if you recall, this emits some statsd messages to 
basically this location so we can test. I refactored it a bit where I could, so I could present a list of messages and just have it loop over them all and send them all each second. Um, the first two tests are what we've already seen before, where I just send one message in the UDP packet, then I send two messages in the UDP packet delimited by a new line. And then last time I ran some tests with trailing new lines and it crashed because we weren't handling, handling empty lines correctly. Now I also want to add test with two empty lines, trailing and not trailing. And then also since the lines function can split on carriage return new line or carriage return line feed, we want to test that as well. So this one has two messages delimited by slash r slash n. All right, let's test that out. And um, I did find this auto reload script, which I'll link to in the um, this episode's script markdown file. Yep. Okay. And here's our. This is just keeps the Python code running or restarts. Python3.c.py whenever any changes are detected inside this folder. It's a little aggressive. Like, so once cargo compiles, it'll restart the Python daemon, but that's okay. So we have roughly two, uh, eight or so mes metrics coming in, which one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about right. And we do, we are skipping a new line, or skipping an empty line. I wonder why, I think we should be skipping more than that. We should be skipping this one for sure, and then this one, and this one. Hmm. What is going on there? Okay, this one is users logins country US host. Let's see. Is it just this one that's ends up being skipped? That is not what I expected. I might have to debug that and figure out because we're already at 13 minutes. Oh boy. <laughs> what can I do here? Let's see here. Yeah, let's stop this so I can get a good picture of what's going on. So this is users, logins, host, and country, and then we have Actually, this is backwards from what I expect. Mm -hmm. Am I even getting these? Yeah, I think so. I should probably uh, just do this. Two, three, four, five. Actually, this is part of five as well. And this one is part of two. Let's just do that for ease here. Well, that's not supposed to happen. I think this is interfering. Oh, good God. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Logins one, two, two, three, four with empty line. Yep. And apparently trailing new line, it totally ignores. That's why we don't have one for this. Huh. Okay. Good to know. And then 
5 has no empty line either because it appears that lines ignores trailing. That is unexpected. String lines. Final line ending is optional. String that ends with a final line ending will return the same lines. Okay, yeah, it ignores the trailing new lines. Got it. Good to know. I learned something today. Okay, cool. Let's push on. Um, another thing we want to do is um, assume that, you know, we don't want to assume that just because we have a string that the regular expression is going to return a valid um, statsd message. And we don't want to assume that once we split that we have the number of parts that we expect. So let's do this as well. Should be greater than or equal to 2. Um, let's do less than 2. Um, so if we don't, tags are optional. So we may have a metric that is just this, in which case we are splitting on a comma and a colon. So in this shortest case, we'll have a vec with two elements. So two is the minimum that we should ever see. So if it's less than two, we want to fail. Um, let's see. Let's just be a little bit um, presumptuous here. And do that. Cool. All right, now I need to test that, and then we'll be done. Let's see. Let's expand this. Oh, that's not, not right. There we go. We will just test with this. All right, start that, and then run this. All right, that seems right. Cool. What else should we handle? I think that's it for now. That may not have been interesting, but uh, we learned a few things about what methods are available and what they do. And it's also very helpful to understand that lines uh, squashes trailing new lines. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.